I know nothing about 3D printers. Nevertheless, I'm willing to learn. And today I'm going to, or at least I'll try to assemble an Ender 3 V2 3D printer by only looking at the included paper menu. No YouTube and no Google is allowed. So please join me in this challenge and let's learn something new together or just have some fun at my expense and see what will happen. Hello, Kirupeyansk is here. Like I said, 3D printers are not my strong side, if I have a strong side at all. But fortunately enough, I have one brand new 3D printer right here. It turns out that the Ender 3 V2 is one of the best 3D printers that you can buy under $300. Also, this printer was recommended to me by my YouTube buddy Matt from Not Enough Tech, who, unlike me, owns a 3D printing black belt. However, the recommendation is one thing, and printer assembly and first 3D print is whole another story. Unlike the regular printers, where you just have to plug and print, with the 3D printers you receive this. And if you are good with IKEA products assembly, you will be ready in no time. Or maybe not. So, assembling by a noob of an Ender 3 V2 3D printer. Here we go! Believe it or not, the first page of the menu was the most difficult for me. I was not quite sure which exact aluminium profiles I have to use for the Z axis. The Ender 3 V2 have four of these and they are just different in size. So one big part of my 3D printer assembly journey were spent here on the first page of the menu. I was very close to just quickly check the YouTube for that. Fortunately, I resist on that temptation and I even choose the right parts. Because I remember that the printer is taller than wider and I took the longest aluminium profiles. I even managed to place the left and right profile on their correct places thanks to the holes and the menu. It will be so much easier for the Creality, that is the vendor of the Ender 3 printer, to mark the profiles with one little L and R somewhere on them. After that, everything started to happening. It even went smooth until I realized that I mounted everything backwards. My fault and not the menu. My fault. It was my bad. I quickly turned the printer to face me so I can read the Ender label and the power switch is on the back. I swapped the places of the aluminium profiles and everything was fine. For now, I managed to mount the Z-axis limit switch module where I just have to loosen the two screws and T-nuts and to align it with the left Z-axis aluminium profile. The second step is to mount the Z-axis motor and the T-type screw. That was easy, except that nowhere in the menu it is stated that you have to remove the rubber cover of the T-type screw and I initially thought that it must stay as it is. Step 3 was to install the pneumatic joint, XE axis kit and synchronous belt. But wait a minute here, what is XE axis? As far as I remember, only X, Y and Z axis are available. This little question bothered me until the whole Ender 3 V2 printer assembly and after I finished, I googled for what the XE axis is. It turns out it is an X axis with an extruder. Anyway, I had to screw the pneumatic joint to the XE axis kit to attach the X axis profile to the XE axis kit and to put the timing belt through it. Note that on the X axis profile there is a large hole where the screw head can fit. The four from the menu is a very very easy one. Here I have to add the extrusion kit and the Z axis passive block. Then I have to put the synchronous belt into the profile along the V shaped wheels of the extrusion kit. And finally to lock it with the Z axis passive block with one M4 by 16 screw. And just like that I reach step 5 from the menu where I have to mount the X-axis tensioner that is the last thing before adding the whole moving kit with everything on it 
onto the Ender 3 V2 3D printer. So, I had to unscrew the plastic thumb nut to take out the tensioner block, but then I have to unscrew this as well and to remove the wheel inside because it was not possible for the timing belt to pass through due to the copper sleeve. And these exact copper sleeves located at the both end of the belt should be attached to the underside of the X carriage. Using the knob on the X axis tensioner, I applied some tension to the X axis belt. Step 6 was not so bad. I just have to install the Z axis moving kit and for that I had to insert the two ends of the Z axis profile along V wheels on both sides. Nothing in the manual is stated about the Z axis stepper motor and the big screw on it, but I'll say it, you have to manually rotate the motor to lower the X axis a bit. And here for the first time I realized that the rubber cover of the T type screw should be removed. Again, nothing in the manual about that. Step 7 was just like a walk in the park, as I only have to install the gantry profile and the display kit. Nothing wrong with the manual here, just to mention that the display should be on the right side of the printer. That means when the ender label and logo are faced towards you and you are able to read them normally. Step 8 is even more trivial and I only have to install the material rack, gantry cover and indication knob, as well as the 2020 profile cover on both sides. Note that I place the material rack on the right side where it should be mounted on the left side. No big deal about that, nothing serious, I move that later. Soon after I reach step 9 from the menu, where I have to wire everything. And here the vendor of the Ender 3 V2 printer, Creality, did a very good job, as every cable have a little clip on it with a letter. So I just have to grab that letter and to check in the menu picture where this letter should be connected. I also have to insert the Teflon tube into the pneumatic connector and to insert the blue clamp. No, not like that. That is better. Set the Ender 3 V2 input voltage on the back of the printer to match the available power. In Europe it is 230 volts and in the United States it is usually 150 volts, as far as I know. First major point is reached. Time to power on the Ender 3 V2 for the first time. My fingers are crossed and I really hope that the printer will not burst into flames. Yes, it is booting up. That is a big success for me, as I'm complete noob and I have never ever seen a 3D printer before in real life. And now I managed to assemble one and even to start it. I even tried to check the printer menu using the included display until I found out that it is not a touch screen display. That was kind of a relief as I immediately told that I got the cables wrong, but at the same time disappointment because it is somehow more natural to have a touch screen display. At the end of the day we are talking about a printer that is under 300 doors and touch screen is not such a big deal. And just when I told that I made it, and everything hard was left behind, I faced another big, very big issue. The Ender 3 V2 doesn't have an assisted leveling function and I have to admit here, because it will burn me from the inside, I cheated and I failed with the challenge as I used YouTube video tutorials to level the printer. Everything until now I managed to do only from the included paper menu. But then I was so scared that I'll mess up the leveling and I'll break the printer so bad that I'll never be able to use it again. On top, the leveling was not well described in the paper menu for the first time users like me. Hello Creality, fix your Ender 3 V2 menu so a noob like me will be able to level the printer. Anyway, my cheating consists of the exploring the Creality website 
where I found some YouTube videos that I used. Here is what I did. First, I adjusted the Z-axis limit switch by losing the two screws so I can move the switch. Then I turned the Z-axis stepper motor manually until the nozzle is about millimeter away from the bed. I did that for the all four corners of the bed. I even downloaded some G-code files that I placed on the SD card. I set the bed temperature to 60 degrees Celsius and I start printing the G-code which actually is not printing anything, but just instructed the printer to position the nozzle over each adjustment knob and in theory the only thing that I had to do is to use a sheet of paper and the adjustment knob to level the printer. What I had to do is to get the nozzle close enough to the bed that I can feel resistance when sliding the paper. But I don't want the nozzle so close to the bed that I can't move the paper at all. And I don't want the nozzle so far from the bed that I can't feel the resistance when moving the paper. So, I started the G-code leveling and then it happened. I scratched my bed during the G-code leveling run. I had a problem, but I don't know what it is exactly and I have no idea what to do. I initially thought that my Z-axis limit switch adjustment was not okay, so I did that again, but everything seems fine there. Then I blamed the G-code file, so I searched for another one that is exactly for the Ender 3 V2 with firmware 1.0.2, which is my printer firmware. I leveled the printer one more time, this time without scratching my bed, and I thought I'm ready to print. So I loaded the included in the printer filament by hitting the nozzle up to 200 degrees and then push the filaments through the hole until I see some filaments fibers coming out of the nozzle. I found a simple 3D model online, again a G-code file. I placed it on the SD card, I did a PLA preheat from the printer's menu and start the printing. The end result was this. So back to the school in the first grade. I checked everything once again, I level everything once more and start another print, hoping that this time everything will be fine. But it was not. It was far from fine. This time something other happened. The filament was not going out of the nozzle, the indication knob was cracking, strangely, and it seems that I somehow burned my bed. It is not scratched, but on the places where the nozzle was, the bed is with different color now. I was totally desperate, and I didn't know what to do exactly. So I heated the nozzle up to 200 degrees Celsius and double checked if filament is going out of the nozzle. Then I noticed that when I command the printer to auto home, something strange is happening. The X and the Y axis were moving smoothly, but the Z axis was not. It was either moved only once down and then stuck, or it didn't move at all. So I loosened the screws of the Z axis stepper motor just a little bit and start out to home again. This time everything was smooth and fast. For the first time I saw that the printer is going a bit up on the Z axis during the out to home. So, I tightened the screws to fix the Z-axis level switch in that position. It seems that this was my main problem from the beginning. There was some tension on the Z-axis and the printer was not able to go up. That is why I scratched and burned my bed and my first print failed. I checked the levels quickly once again, started a preheat PLA procedure and then I started 3D printing. This time everything went fine. The result is this one. I don't know is it okay or not, as I don't have anything to compare it to. So you can tell me in the comments what do you think. Please! I managed to assemble the 3D printer Ender 3 V2 using only the paper menu, but I failed with the leveling and I used YouTube videos for that part. The printer assembly issues I had due to only using the paper menu 
was nothing compared to the leveling process and first 3D print. Nevertheless, I'm happy with the end result. In fact, this whole thing was very useful to me, because I learned a lot, and now I even know the names of most of the printer parts, and their roles, and that is until I totally forget them. But that is one of the reasons to make this video and read an article, so I can easily remember them if needed and to help as far as I can to someone else that is going through the same process. Now is the best time to thank the guys from Banggood who sent me this printer for test and review. If you want to buy the same printer, you can find an affiliate link in the video description. If you decide to use that link, I will receive a small commission from your purchase with no additional cost for you. I will appreciate a lot if you leave a like and subscribe for my channel with the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server. Remember, home smart but not hard. I'm Kiryu and I'm done speaking.